Hi and welcome to CD number 10. I've been waiting to do this one for a long time. It's right arm versus left. Yeah, you know, and I, this is so important to all of you and I keep saying that for all of them, but you know what, it's true. You can't bypass any of the things. Now for someone that's got uh, this problem, that lesson could be important. And somebody who's got this problem, this lesson could be important. So they're all important, but I've been really waiting to do this one because I think this one will clarify and clear up a lot of things. So we're going to talk about your right arm versus your left arm, and I hope the explanation that you get will clarify and allow you to swing more freely on the golf course because you now know what you're doing. Let's also call this the hydraulics of the golf swing too. Okay, so I want you to join me in the lesson part. We'll see you there. Welcome to the lesson portion. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of a history lesson, a little bit of a science lesson, and I'm not always sure which order it's going to be in. So, let me get started. You know, it seems to me, at least as far as I can remember back growing up, it was always explained to golf, the golf swing was always explained to me as a left-sided motion. Pull with your left side, pull with your left side. Okay, fair enough. That, that was what's said. Then in uh, 1985, I went down and took the lessons from Tom Tomasello, and he taught me about staying on plane, keeping on plane. And he made a very important statement that you probably, if you've got a lot of my stuff, heard me say before. But hopefully right now this is going to ring a bell to you because it's really important. My backswing travels back up and in instantly and simultaneously. Really important. My follow through goes through, in and up instantly and simultaneously. The importance of that is for speed, number one. Secondly, it helps me keep the club face in the correct condition throughout my entire golf swing. The only thing that can stop somebody from doing this is having the wrong idea of what correct is, and we need to explore that. That's kind of the science part of it. Okay, let's do this first. Let me tell you what correct is, and I'm going to tell you why it might be so hard to do. Correct is we have to learn to swing our arms on plane, which we talked about in the arm CD. Really important stuff if you want the club face to come back to the correct condition. Now we have the hydraulics of what makes this happen. Well, I'd like you to buy into this. If you're a right-handed golfer, and let's just stay with right-handed because it gets confusing if I have to keep going back and forth, and you left-handers are extremely good at reversing things and listening, so let's just do it that way. I would love for you to believe that the whole game is played through your right side, your right hand, especially the focus point on your right hand, right there. I plug that into my golf club. Once that's plugged into my golf club, my brain goes right to my right hand. And I want my right hand to go to the top of my backswing on plane again, which we talked about in previous videos, at the target line. My right wrist does not cock. It stays in the bent condition, but does not cock. It stays bent. So I'm thinking about taking my right hand and putting it to the top of my backswing on plane. This helps me achieve my shoulder turn, the turning of my left hip. I want to try to keep my left knee where I started it as my anchor. That's called torque, which I'm sure you've all heard about. So here, what I have to do to, to make this happen without complication, without me going against what wants to happen, the club head, in conjunction with a target line, has to travel back up and in instantly and simultaneously. Not back and then in and then up, which really contorts my body, as you can see. On my follow through, the club head, through my right hand, through my focus point, goes in, up, and through the golf ball to my finish position. My right wrist, again, staying bent. Now, in other videos, I've mentioned a bunch of stuff about the right hand, and will continue to, and I'm going to reinforce it again now. It is, it would be correct to say that my right wrist is trying to maintain my bent condition throughout my entire golf swing. However, it would also be true to say that it is quite possible that my right wrist may move back towards the flattened condition and impact. Not because I want it to, because it may move back towards the flattened condition. But that does not give us the right to say that it flattens out. Terminology to me is everything, and I hope you buy my CDs because I try to be more exacting than anyone else does. And I hope that's why you're in it for the long haul, because I am. So we're going to get the terminology right, and I'm never going to skimp on terminology because 
if you want to take three or four shots off your game and you're a 10 handicap, it is down to small nuances, not great big huge things. So we got to get started somewhere. So my club head, I'm going to say it again, on my backswing, through my right hand, my left arm, I perceive it as being inert, inactive. I see it as a piece of rope. It is being pulled by my right hand to the top of my backswing. I am attempting to take it back up and in instantly and simultaneously and I'm trying, underline the word trying, to keep my right arm straight. Now you'll notice that I don't keep my right arm straight but I'm trying to. That keeps my left arm straight. So you will not catch me ever giving a lesson that says keep your left arm straight. However, what I will say is keep the extensor action of your right arm in place, meaning always try to straighten your right arm, no cocking of the right wrist. That puts me back on plane and it does not allow me to get off balance. It doesn't allow me to get pulled off balance. Next, for those who been have been told to pull with their left side, I will argue that. Because on plane, your right arm wants to swing on plane to the left and up, squaring the club face. Your right arm wants to swing on plane to the left and up, squaring the club face. Your left arm would prefer to go straight, not allowing your club face to square up. As a matter of fact, that's what keeps the club face open, is you swinging off plane. Off plane can off, quite off, often because, because you're trying to swing your arm straight. I've heard it said, I've seen people do it, and if somebody said, you gotta pull with your left side, it's going to happen. Other things that can happen. If you allow your right hand to be your velocitor, if you relax your left side, getting ahead of the ball is virtually an impossibility. If I try to pull with my left arm, that is definitely in play and someone's there going to say to you well you blocked it your body got ahead of it well the truth is your brain was trying to pull with your left arm which doesn't allow the club face to, to, to square if they would have said the velocity is in your right wrist and the correct use of it while your left arm stays soft you can do it as much as you want your left hip will move out of the way the ball will go on a much straighter line, far less often to the right. So if you would have had that piece of information, we could have bypassed all this stay behind the ball stuff, and I do believe it's just stuff because it's not the truth. There's other ways to go about fixing this. Okay, so it's really important that you start, you go to the practice tee, which we'll get into in a second, and you have this mindset about the lines to follow, what the correct lines are, but now you, have the, you must have to have the right hydraulics to know what's driving the show because you can't get pull, pull, push. It just drives you crazy. There has to be one factor that kind of starts to pull it all together and that is through your focus point on your right hand and the understanding of the right arm versus the inactivity, the rope of the left arm. And I think if you do that there'll be less mental fighting going on which again is a clarification of the golf swing. It's not an addition to, it's almost a subtraction from, because now it's not you guessing. Push, pull, pull, push. We're eliminating the guessing. So I really hope that that information allows you to now go to the practice tee and hit balls, but for a whole different reason than the person out there watching might perceive why you're doing it. So that's the, the lesson of the day, and I do it on all shots, by the way, all shots, all shots including putting, which I've got a great big thing coming up in, in the next little while, putting, because I still think putting's huge. You know it's huge. It's not what I mean. i got a whole brand new theory and a whole thing coming out that I think is going to kind of blow a few people away with putting. So I hope you enjoy that, and I'll see you on the practice, on the, on the practice tee for some drills. Okay, let's show you some drills to do. I saw a thing on the TV the other day talking about John Daly, how he's been practicing a lot lately. And they mentioned that it was chipping and pitching. He's practicing a lot with one hand. And they said, I believe...